Welcome to episode three of the screencast series on getting started with the ASP.NET MVC wrappers for Kendo UI. Now, so far we've covered how to install the wrappers using the Visual Studio add-in, how to create a widget, and how to bind that widget to data. Then we looked at the Kendo UI tree view and how you can use the wrappers to help you display a complex hierarchical relationship from your database while loading in data via Ajax just in time. Today we're going to look at quite possibly the most popular control in the Kindo UI suite, and that's the almighty grid. The Kindo UI grid is absolutely brimming with features, and the wrappers are designed to make it a trivial endeavor for you to use as a developer. Today we'll look at how to create a Kindo UI grid and bind that grid to some data. And then we'll turn on some of the grid features like paging, sorting, filtering, and grouping. And then lastly, we'll take a look at what it's going to take for you to get the grid to work in concert with the server so that the server can take care of the paging, sorting, and filtering as the grid requests it. The Kindo UI grid is much like all of the other widgets in the Kindo UI suite. It requires you to specify the type of data that you will be displaying. And this is necessary later on when we get into grid editing. This means that we are going to need to create a model class that represents the data for the grid. In the case of this example, we'll be using the products table from the Northwind database. I chose this table because it presents many of the common challenges that you face when trying to use a grid to display and edit data. I'm going to create a model class for a product. There are quite a few fields in the products table, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to be using just the ID, the name, the units in stock, the unit price, the discontinued flag, and the supplier and category. Now, you'll notice from this diagram of the Northwind database that the supplier and the category are separate tables and are joined via a relationship. In order to model this in the code, I'm going to create a class for the supplier. I'll do the same for category. The supplier has many fields, but I just want the name and the ID. I also need the name and the ID for the category. Now that I have a model for a complete product, I can write a simple link statement to execute against the EF model, which will return all of the products and map each of them into the product model that I just defined. I'll use the magic of screencasts to speed this up a bit for you. So now you can see that I simply selected from the products table and then mapped the items to their respective model types. Then I return the entire list of products with the view as the model for the view. Now in typical MVC fashion, we need to create a strongly typed view to display these items. I'll choose the list scaffold since we are essentially listing out products. Visual Studio creates a table that displays the products. This table isn't very friendly. We can't sort it, can't page through it, we can add in all of these things manually with a lot of JavaScript, or we can just let Kindo UI handle all of this for us. Now first, let's remove the static HTML table. Next, create a Kindo UI grid with the MVC wrappers and specify its type as the model. If you remember from the first two screencasts, we also have to give it a name, which becomes the underlying HTML elements ID. Then we can specify a column for the name, the supplier and category, unit price, units in stock, and discontinued. If we run this now, we get a Kindo UI grid that's listing the products. Let's start to turn on some of the features for the grid. First off, let's do paging. Just add the pageable method using the Fluent API. If we run this, you'll see that paging is enabled. But the grid is actually posting back to the server every time. We don't want that. We already have all the data. There's no reason to make a round trip back to the server to get it again. We need to get the grid to page client side. To do this, we need to specify some more information about its data source. First off, in the data source, we'll want to enable Ajax, and then we will set the server operation to false, which tells Kindo UI not to use the server for any actions that occur inside of the grid, or rather not to post back. Now the grid is pageable and no post back occurs. Let's go ahead and enable some other features like sorting and filtering, and we'll add grouping as well. Now the grid is sortable. It's also filterable with a very robust filtering menu. 
We can also group simply by dragging column headers. You can see how feature rich this grid is and how the MVC wrappers here are doing all the work for you under the covers. However, the category and supplier fields are being shown with their field name as the title, name, and the unit price is not displayed as a price. We can change the title of the supplier and category fields very easily. We can also specify a currency format for the unit price field. And you can find out more information about how to do formatting in the Kindle UI documentation. Now this all works very well for small sets of data, but you will likely have thousands of rows in your grids. In that case, we definitely do not want all of this data in the browser. That's just going to slow everything down. We want the data the user needs to see and only that data. We also want the server to handle things like paging, sorting, grouping, and filtering since, frankly, servers are really good at that sort of thing. Now, if we're going to implement this manually, this would take some work. We would need to parse the incoming HTTP request from Kendo UI, apply dynamic where clauses and filtering and grouping, as well as handle any null scenarios. Fortunately, the MVC wrappers include a data source request as well as a to data source result method that do all of this work for you. Let's create a get method on the products controller that we'll call with Ajax for data. In that method, we will be using the same link query. However, we want to parse the incoming HTTP request into a Kindle UI data source request. We can actually do that right in the method signature. Now, how do we apply this request and its parameters to our query? Simple. All we have to do is specify that we're returning a JSON result and then call the to data source result on the link query, passing in the request object. If you can believe it, you're done. No more work is required of you on the server. The wrappers are going to take it from here. We just need to go back to the grid, and instead of passing in a model object, we're going to remove the model definition and specify our product model as the type instead. Inside the data source, we just need to specify that the get method is now the action for getting the data to display in the grid. Now the grid is fully AJAX enabled. All the data is read from the server exactly when you need it. All the paging, sorting, grouping, and filtering is being done on and by the server. You can interact with massive sets of data this way. The browser stays light and fast, and the server crunches all of the data giving you just what you need just when you need it. Kindle UI takes care of all the configuration for you via the MVC wrappers. Let's recap. We looked at how to create a simple grid and bind it to server-side data. We turned on some advanced features in the grid like paging, sorting, filtering, and grouping. We then set up our grid to use AJAX and use the Kindle UI data source request and to data source response method to apply the parameters sent from the grid to the link query. By now you're starting to see the incredible power of the MVC wrappers. In the last episode, we're going to take this grid the rest of the way by adding in editing capabilities, including custom editors, validation, and much more.